It has been a lovely few days camped in Port Townsend. Hi, my name is Flossie and I live in this 1999 Ford E350 step van, which I've converted into my tiny home on wheels. I've come to the Port Townsend Wooden Boat Show because I'm obsessed with the ocean and I need to decide if I'm pursuing my dream of land and a cabin or considering buying a boat to live on and travel with instead. We are here. Next up, customs. Crossing the border in my van is always an exciting thing. Not knowing who I will get inspected by, what level of detail they'll take into where I'm going, how long for, and whether they'll even look in my van or not. Where's my orange? Taking the ferry across from Port Angeles has been the most stress-free way that I have gone into the US with a vehicle. The coast of Washington is gorgeous. The forest-lined tree roads, the highways that go through and along the ocean front out towards Port Townsend. It's one of my favorite pieces of this drive. I wonder if I'm seeing Pacific Crest Trail hikers hiking the road here. I am not sure. I am in Washington again! <laughs> I'm heading to Port Townsend for the Wooden Boat Show and I'm really excited about it. I have friends there coming to meet me and Hopefully I will get out in the water, on the water, around the water, on the boats, under the wash, on the, I don't know, it's just going to be lots of fun. And I'm excited to look at tons of wooden boats and learn a bunch about everything. There's going to be YouTubers there that I know and admire and I'm excited to see and maybe there'll be YouTubers we can hang out, I don't know. but. It'll be a fun and exciting time. Woohoo! There are plenty of people who stay on the street in Port Townsend, but this time I had booked a campground. I can see the ocean! Last time I was in Port Townsend, it was December. Winter! The beginning of winter for my birthday. I'm excited to be here again, this time for the festival. My goals and dreams feel so far away. Obstacles lately feel like they keep coming up to pop into my way financial setbacks, the rising cost of housing, interest rates, and I'm not getting any younger. That's a cool school bus. So much solar on the roof. I've been feeling frustrated, discouraged, heartbroken. The state of the world means property is incredibly expensive and the world around us is looking even more grim. To add to that, I've been working hard on bringing some more stability into my financial situation. I have been freelancing, working my ass off, wow! and trying to further my filmmaking career, my YouTube income, and my day job and have been experiencing some setbacks. The last two years have seriously beaten at my will to keep going into a shallow shell of my original motivation. The first day of the festival, the weather was absolutely glorious. Towards the waterfront, you could see boats in the harbor for miles away. In my head, I keep playing over and over. Is it worth it? Should I save and buy land or should I buy a boat? I have savings and I could buy a boat way sooner than I could buy land. This brings us to the Wooden Boat Show. 
Port Townsend, a gorgeous classic old colonial town and a show full of classic old style wooden boats. Restored, gleaming and full of romantic aspirations and dreams of what boat life could be. My mind has romanticized boat life. I can see myself as a pirate looking character on the bow of a ship, looking out with my eyeglass, peering into the islands through the fog, seeing the isles of the British Columbia's British Pacific Northwest. The schools, the sailboats, the old BC vintage forestry boats, gorgeous, bigger vintage motorboats, powerboats, houseboats, beautiful vessels everywhere. This isn't your cable anymore. <laughs> Would you keep this or would you spend it? It's worth a free drink, but it is a cute little totem. So. I'm going on that boat tomorrow. Happy, tired, and quite overstimulated. Back in the van, it was time for dinner. It feels lovely to have a place to come back to, to retreat to my inner sanctuary, somewhere quiet, warm and cozy, to get away from it all after a long, extroverted day to introvert back into myself. This is the reason I live in a van. I get to go amazing places and take my house with me, have everything I need to come back to at the end of a long day. Good morning. Good morning, campground. Some campgrounds are interesting. People get along and chat and hang out and some do not. You could tell that most of the people at this campground were going to the wooden boat show. I saw t-shirts for the Dallas YouTube channel. I saw people playing with ropes and getting ready to have their stalls and vend. I saw people getting ready to take out a boat for the day. It was amazing the collection of different people that come to places like this in their tiny houses, schoolies, vans, campers and buses. The next day, we were off on a tour on the Adventurous. The Adventurous was commissioned in 1913 by the Rice Brothers in East Boothbay, Maine. She's 133 feet long with 110 feet length on deck. And she is a gaff topsail two-masted schooner with 5,478 square feet of sail. A wooden hull and a John Deere engine in a gross tonnage of 98 tons, designed by B.B. Crowenshield. The yacht was launched in 1913 in Maine, built for John Borden II, a wealthy businessman from Chicago. The adventurous's maiden voyage was to the Arctic to secure a bowhead whale specimen for the American Museum of Natural History. During the World War II, she served the US Coast Guard patrolling the coastline. By 1950s, ships of her vintage were becoming increasingly rare. After a harrowing journey, she was repurchased and eventually made it to her new home in the Puget Sound. The Puget Sound's environmental tour ship in the late 1980s Another organization would continue the ship's youth mission. The Sound Experience is a not-for-profit, and the Adventurous was the ideal on-the-water teaching platform, environmental stewardship and protection of the Puget Sound. 
Now an icon of the Salish Sea, the adventurous remains an authentic example of living maritime history. Youth of all ages can climb on board, take the helm and sail as they did a hundred years ago. It's indescribable. Lacey is one of my favourite wee boats. One that I would have in a heartbeat. An old ex-BC forestry boat. She's yellow and she's gorgeous. Like much of the west coast of Vancouver Island and the Pacific Northwest, this Washington coast also gets sucked in with fog sometimes. I don't think many people will be going anywhere today. Everything is sucked in. Later on in the day, it burnt off. But for the last day of the wooden boat show, it was quite something to see all of the ghostly ship outlines disappearing off into the fog. Technically, you could say I am a full-time nomad, 
I am from New Zealand. I am currently not in New Zealand, so therefore I am nomadic. So I think this elitism and just like, oh, you don't meet this Ill uh, criteria of being blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I think it is harmful to folks who don't have the financial means to constantly travel because they are they have a job they might be working somewhere they need to come back to frequently to earn money to in order to support them traveling there might be folks who have parents that they need to attend because they're elderly or they have other members in community to be a nomad is a massive sacrifice in people and community and I am not willing to do that. The thing that I really value, as you have seen in my past videos, is a sense of community. Whether I build that in one home base, whether I build it as I travel around with the people I meet, I think this is a really important human need and I have chosen that this is the way I will do it. I have rented parking spaces before where I live in my van I have built out vans and I live in parking space and then I travel from that space and if you want to go see it this is the way it's always been from the beginning of my YouTube channel go back take a look at my step van build playlist I'll link it up here I really appreciate a sense of stability and a sense of I do not need to keep every single piece of my entire life in this van 99.9% .9 of it is in this van and then there are a few things that I cannot keep in these van, this van because they're too big. For example, I don't currently have my e-bike with me. It is too big to travel and I have rented smaller pedal bikes because they're more practical and I can get return them and then not have them in my van for the rest of the trip. I don't yet have the money to put on a front bumper on the front of my van because of the financial priorities I'm putting on myself right now. So I think there is this beautiful thing about living on the road. And I think there is also this like, oh, you must have it really rough in order to qualify for everybody's respect. And I'm like, you can still have it hard. You can still have a breakdown. You can still have rough times. You can still live large you can still have massive adventures and have some place that come you come back to that maybe you rent a spot maybe you have friends whose driveway you come back to that's still a home base for me I have a combination of those things I have people who I come back to I have a partner I have a job that remi requires me to sometimes not always go into a city and so I think judging everybody's situations as unique human beings giving them uh, graces and understanding for how they might want to live differently or need to live differently and I think there is a sense of compassion and understanding that we can all bring to people whose lives look different to us and if there is people who desire to have if there's people who desire to live on the road not making this the qualification of this is what you must do to be a van lifer for example you don't have to meet any sort of certain qualification or i don't know some sort of made up woe is me criteria to be somebody who lives in a van or lives on the road like these are all glorious things that we should not make inaccessible to others because we all have different financial means. We all have different life needs. And I think that is a great thing for all of us. Anyway, I think I've had a little rant and I'll probably edit this down a lot later. So. Thank you all of those of you who support me, who understand, who understand that community and how living in a van is different for every single person. I appreciate you all. I see you. <sighs> Look at this funny money. Um, I'm so used to colorful money in New Zealand, Australia and Canada. 
This is all one color. I'm gonna go get my hair cut. Bye. A few moments later. What do you think? Look at this place, it's so cute. I think I'm gonna go for a swim, dive, like really help recenter my nervous system, be in the water. And there's so much kelp forest out there. I am at the beach, going for a swim. I always have to lube up my wetsuit in order to put it on. There's a lot of kelp out there, but it is so overcast that I'm gonna have to use the light on my GoPro to hopefully see underwater. Anyway, I'm excited. Making use of the foggy afternoon, deciding to go to the beach with the van was a grand plan. I was so excited. Visibility is non-existent. Parking the van right on the waterfront, looking out my back doors straight over into the ocean. What a dream. I was excited to put my wetsuit on and get into the ocean. A great way to decompress after the overwhelm of being surrounded by so many people at the festival. I free dive generally to 30 or 40 feet deep and I wear a seven millimeter thick spear fishing wetsuit which comes in two pieces, gloves, booties, a weight belt and today I took my GoPro and a light with me so I could see underwater and hopefully dive the kelp forests looking for fish. Getting into the ocean helps me calm my brain and figure out again what my immediate priorities are and what's my immediate next step. Being frustrated isn't getting me any closer to my dreams. I'm expending anxious energy, worrying and stressing. Sometimes this energy takes me out of my body out of the present moment, worrying about the unknown future. The moment my head goes underwater, part of me goes into immediate survival mode. If I don't concentrate on what and where I am right now, there's danger in it. If I don't actively concentrate on what and where I am right now, I could put myself in serious danger. I'm actively checking in with my body, my brain, my oxygen, and how long I have left on my breath hold. Ducking under the water, peering down through the surface murkiness, between the kelp fronds and trunks and the dark shadows of the plants that live five plus meters below me. I step away from my brain chatter and focus deeply on my breathing. I can feel my heart beat in my chest and check in with how excited I am. If I'm too excited to be in the ocean, my heart rate will be way too high and too fast to give me a long enough depth time for bottom time. I need that time to get down have a look around before I run out of air and have to come back to the surface again. Precious heart rate monitoring. Sitting at the surface, relaxing, tuning into my body, feeling the weight of the ocean rock me back and forth, and then diving deep below. Above me, I start to notice that the weather is slowly improving because I've taken a 
and because I've taken a step back from the anxious, stressed, nervous chatter that was my brain before, I'm starting to notice the light flares and sparkles from the surface and the incredible way the kelp forests come to life. The colours, the brightness, the contrast between the color, the contrast between the colour of the water and the fronds, the wee crabs, and all of that other life that has made these kelp forests their homes. Fog is clearing. Okay. But yeah, it's lifted. Boats cost a lot of money and the ongoing maintenance is, in my perception, currently way more than the cost over the same amount of time for land in a cottage or a wee cabin. I still actually don't really know what I want or how much I'll be able to afford or how much of a mortgage the bank might eventually give me when I ask. I still know that I want to continue to explore and travel. So maybe buying a house or land will possibly reduce the amount of travel I'll be able to do. So I don't know. But coming to this boat show has brought me again closer to the ocean, back connected with my mind and my body. I feel so much gratitude for the amount of travel I'm able to do, the places I'm able to go and share with you. And I hope to continue exploring this quandary and conflict within myself. Exploring the options, maybe tossing up back and forth. One day, maybe I'll end up with a small boat, a small dinghy that I can go places, camp and travel and explore the Gulf Islands the inner passageways of the Pacific Northwest and British Columbia's in an inner waterways in that place. Did I? Oh no. I think we were in the water for about an hour and a half, almost two hours. And in that time, the fog cleared up. The sun burst through and lit up the kelp forests like rainbows. The glistening sunbeams towering through the water like fingers, making the end of this dive the dreamiest part and the most satisfying. What a beautiful gift. All right, we are going to put together lunch. To have some fish on the beach, put a little stove out, and cook the fish that I caught the other day outside. That was way more successful exit from the water than yesterday. Yay! Look at this filthy, filthy, disgusting. Stop. A new one from Facebook Marketplace. I think we're good. Butter's melting. That means it's hot. Oh, Yay! Something to my insides that's pretty fantastic. Water does something. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the same exact thing could easily happen to me when you make fun of my life. Wow. Is that like 
tasty. It's terrible. <laughs> so terrible that you can come back for a second? Fog rolled back in, so this guy came right close to shore, probably because he doesn't have AIS. And there's a shipping container lane way out there. not parking out too much but there's not many other people here and we won't be here for long these radios are fantastic for keeping in contact on convoy can you, can you get that in there? stop at Finn River Cidery and it was amazing and I picked up a chai flavoured dessert wine super tasty Super excited to try that later. And there was a whole lot of food trucks and food stands there, and one of them was an oyster shack, and you know I love oysters. So I went up and was like, So, how do you. Can I take some home with me? I have an RV and a fridge to put them in immediately. And by home, I obviously need my van. Like, and they were so great said yes. So I have oysters for dinner. They were having some sort of van thing and I really wanted to get to Seattle before dark. So I didn't want to hang around but oysters for dinner! Who knows? I'll continue to save for now. Continue to work on getting more financial stability because that feels like a dream that currently I can work on. Speaking of that, I appreciate all of the Patreons who follow me and join me over there. It is a joy and a delight. And you are all such an amazing support to me on the days that I have struggled and feel like the world is a little bit harder than the day before. Thank you all so much for watching. I enjoy reading all your comments. And I will see you all again next week.